everybody, and welcome to the Tea with Crema. My name is Chris. I'll be one of your hosts today, and I'm joined by my best friend, Emma. Good morning. Today's episode of the Tea with Crema is about one of my favorite pastimes. As you know, Emma and I have a common love language in food. <laughs> and so today we are diving into our experiences with food in the sense of meal prepping, really figuring out what is it? Have we done it before? Are we still doing it? What do we like about it? What do we not like about it? Just all of the things that go with like making your food ahead of time. And what does that look mm-hmm. like for you? Before we get started, we have our tea checks. So Emma, what tea did you bring today? I am drinking the last out of the four sampler teas. It's the lemon and lime twist black tea. It is not my favorite. I don't think I like lemon in teas unless it's like a cold iced tea. When it's hot, it's not my favorite. So, and then the lime is a weird addition to me. It's not my, yeah, it's not my favorite out of the four that were in that sampler box. What about you? What are you drinking today? Today's tea is Esther Lemon Pie by the Esther Tea Company. And honestly, I was thinking the same thing in that it was going to be like a kind of a bitter lemon tea and not really add to it. Because I do like lemon teas that are, you know, designed to like help with sore throats. But this one was really a straightforward black tea featuring just like the nicest little hint of vanilla and lemon. And so I think somehow those, those flavors just really, they just work together. Honestly, it, I was pleasantly surprised for sure. Easy. Four out of five stars. So real question, starting with food. First of all, do you like food? Yes, obviously. Duh. Glad we got that out of the way. So one of the things that I know that I have, I can't even say I've been doing it off and on. I've been pretty consistent with like meal prepping for a while now, but I feel like I, I know you're kind of like off and on with it, sometimes really on it and sometimes not as much on it. Also, you're in a different kind of like work environment. So all of those things, but just a little background on it. Generally speaking, do you meal prep or like have you meal prepped historically? Like what's your experience around? meal prepping, which we're just defining today as making your meals ahead of time. And it can be for lunch, dinner, breakfast, just anytime you're making your meals ahead of time, which I think some people would consider like essentially almost like leftovers, but just to be eaten at a later date. I have not meal prepped recently. I was really into meal prepping when I was teaching in the US and it was really based on time constraints. So As some of you are familiar or know, when you're a teacher, you generally only have 30 minutes to eat when your class is not with you. So like in my old high school, uh, middle school, high school, it was, I think we actually had a 45 minute lunch. So I generally had a lot of time to eat, but not enough for me to leave campus, come back, eat, and then teach for fourth period. So my mom and I started meal prepping and it was just kind of a way because our agreement was that within the house, my mom would buy the groceries. I had to prepare it. She would eat whatever I prepared, but she would not prepare it. Like she would not be cooking. And so my way to get around that, because I was getting, I was so exhausted when I would come home was that, okay, I'm going to meal prep breakfast, lunch, and dinner, which we did. So I meal prepped for, I started teaching in 2017. I probably meal prepped until I left. And it was off and on in terms of like breakfast that I would meal prep, but it was mostly like lunches. So lunch and dinner, I was meal prepping. and it was just due to time. So in my last year of teaching, I didn't actually teach a fourth period. So I would have like technically an hour and a half, no more than that, like almost two hours to eat lunch. So I found myself actually going out to eat a lot more in my last year of teaching because I had time, but most of it stemmed from not having any time. So that is kind of why I started meal prepping. Why did you start meal prepping? I cooked a lot with my mom and for my family growing up. And so when you are just always cooking for a family. You're always cooking large amounts of food. And it was something that I just never really unlearned when I moved in and started living by myself, just because I then realized that if I still make large batches of food, 
I can save the food and then not have to cook for a very long time. So for me, like meal prepping just came out of just accident. I was just cooking the way I was usually cooking and then realized that I could just like have it for extended periods of time. Because I, again, like I don't mind leftovers. Like it don't, it does not bother me. My cooking is so good that I'll eat it today, tomorrow, and the day after that. It will not bother me. And so I was just kind of, again, not to say that I didn't like discover meal prepping, but like, For myself, I kind of stumbled upon meal prepping. So I was doing it already ahead of time and then started actually getting into like the actual practice and learning more about like actually meal prepping. And in part because I started learning more about nutrition in general. There was a lot of like nutritional issues, not issues, but experiences I was going through when I moved here because I also became a vegetarian shortly after becoming an independent adult. It was like a a crash course on, I was still cooking massive amounts of, not massive, but like larger amounts of food than like one person could reasonably consume in one sitting. And so was still making large amounts of food, had to learn about nutrients because I was experiencing a nutrient deficit for the first month of being a vegetarian. And then also facing the conundrum of time in that, 30 minutes, except at an elementary school, it's less than that because you have to take the kids to lunch and then pick them up from lunch. And so you definitely get less than 30 minutes of lunch. You just got to be, you got to be efficient. You got to be on it. And so just having to figure that out. And then even moving into this position where in theory, like I don't have a class, but like, so in theory, I would have more time, but like oftentimes it's like working lunches or something will happen in the middle of eating and I like have to go deal with that issue or someone will have a question. Yeah. I've just been, it's just worked. The art of meal prepping. I've refined it. It just, it works. Yeah. So I stopped meal prepping when I moved to Japan. One, because I was by myself when I first got here, as most of you know, and it was cheaper for me to actually go to like the convenience stores and eat there versus going and buying like fresh vegetables and fruits. It was enough so that it was like not too big of a price difference where I, how do I say this? Like you didn't feel compelled. Yeah. Like the time that I would put into like prepping a meal or doing all of the things and like cooking and cleaning afterward was not enough or it wasn't big enough of a like a price point change for me to just go out to eat or to just go to like the convenience store which already has like balanced meals prepared for me so there was a lot of that 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 was happening where I just and the portions were like correctly portioned so I wasn't you know overeating or anything like that When I first got here, that was kind of like the rationale behind it. Isaac and I had a really long conversation recently about like getting back into meal prepping because it's a lot to grocery shop the day of and then prepare the day of. And also thinking about like the way that groceries are packaged in Japan is that it's like, you know, proportioned out for like two people. So like one meal takes us only one day versus like when I was meal prepping, like you can bulk buy in the US, I feel so easily. And it's so accessible and it's like meant for families. Like you're only meant to go to the grocery store once a week in the US. Whereas in Japan, I think it's kind of the culture where you do go to the grocery store once a day or every other day, if anything, because also like our fridges are much smaller. Like I'm taller than my refrigerator. So it's just like space wise, time wise, money wise. It was not, it didn't make, I guess it wasn't like a fiscal responsibility anymore. Back in the US, like it was like, no, you're spending too much money going out to like McDonald's every day. So it's cheaper for you to just meal prep versus here. It's so like convenient and so accessible. And I also really like the school lunches, which we've had a whole episode on school lunches. So that's also why I don't meal prep anymore. But Isaac and I were talking about like, maybe we should start meal prepping our dinners to make it easier because he's our main chef in the house and he's our main like caregiver in that way so he cooks you know like he has to cook after a long day and like that's not fair to him either so thinking about now how do we move forward we also don't have a microwave in our apartment microwaves are generally a little bit more expensive so that's just like one appliance that we haven't invested in so yeah so there's like a lot of different things that have gone into us not meal prepping we're trying to like figure out if that's something that we want to move forward with though like in the new year and like as the year progresses if that's something that we'd be interested in so yeah that's kind of how it's been so far imagine having to reheat your food in the oven which we don't even have an oven either ovens are not a norm how do you even heat up food 
So when we have had leftovers, like we reheated it on the stove. Like you just put it back in a pot, reheat it there. Very like labor intensive. Shoot. Yeah, it's not it's not the easiest way to like you know meal prep and do all of the things. So when you meal prep, and I guess I can talk about like how I used to do it as well. Like what is your timeline? Like how does what does that look like in a typical? I'm getting ready for a a week of Monday through Friday. Like how do you get prepared for that? Well, I start by figuring out what I'm gonna make. Almost a week in advance. Like when? Like so, Monday or like Sunday? No, because Sunday I'm really focused on like the prep of the current week. So starting on Monday, I'll start like temperature checking myself. Just like, mm. okay, what am I craving? What am I feeling? What am I interested in? I try to rotate the ingredients that I'm using, the flavors that I'm using, the combinations. So, for example, this past week I had spaghetti noodles. So I know that in this upcoming week. Whatever I make will not involve pasta. Ah,、uh, okay. and then like there will be a week where like I'll have a rice-based thing. So okay, I can't have, or not that I can't, but I won't have two like rice weeks. And then I'll have like a quinoa week, and then I'll have something different. I'll just try something new, a brown rice, all of these different things. So I try to like again vary the nutrients, vary the ingredients, because I do know that like、I、can burn myself out on stuff. And so, what will happen is like the week before, I start building up ingredient ideas, or either okay, do I want to go with a recipe that I already know, or do I want to kind of like wing it, or do I want to someone send me a recipe that I want to try out? Like, so I'm starting to like figure that part out the week before. Saturday is grocery day, and that's when I'm figuring out: am I going to like a quick little local grocery store, or am I going to make the journey, the trip, the excursion? To HEB, thirty plus minutes away, because that kind of depends. I like sometimes I'll have to go to like an Asian market if there are certain ingredients that I need to go get, or certain certain products are only available in certain stores, and so I kind of have to plan accordingly. So if I know that this is going to be a HEB week, then I got to make sure that my recipes fit the products available at HEB. If I'm just going to run up to the local Kroger, my recipes got to fit what's that available. what's available there. If, I'm gonna make a recipe that requires me to go to the Asian supermarket. Do I have time to do that? Because that's its own. I don't. The Asian supermarket definitely does not have, or I'm not well versed enough to like get everything from that. So that's like an additional trip if that's the week that it calls for. And so again, all of that typically happens on Saturday, and then Sunday is the big day. So that's when I am cooking whatever I'm cooking for the week on Sunday. On my peak weeks, the weeks that I am like the most rocking it, I make breakfast, lunch, and dinner for the week done. And I've just noticed that the times that I do meal prep, I feel like the quality of food that I'm eating is better because, in the same way that like I get tired, and so if I don't meal prep dinner, like this past week, I just made pizza because it's three ingredients: one, two, three, four ingredients. You throw it in the oven and it's done. So I, I, I mean, I get, I did make a pizza. So it's not like I just like bought <laughs> a frozen pizza. Like I did make the pizza, but like it's still not as like I would say nutritionally robust as if I took the time to actually like meal prep something. So when you're meal prepping, so like let's say for lunch, are you eating the same thing every day for lunch, or do you meal prep like two different types of lunches and you like rotate, or like two types of dinners and you rotate? If I do anything like that, I would whatever two dishes I made、mm-hmm. will go part lunch, part dinner. So maybe like if I make the rice a rice based recipe and a pasta based recipe on Monday, it might be pasta for lunch, rice for dinner. Tuesday, it might be rice for lunch, pasta for dinner.、Mm. So it just kind of depends. Otherwise, on a base level, it's I made a food for lunch for the week. I made a food for dinner for the week. Breakfast. There is variation because I do alternate between a more grain centric breakfast. So I usually have like there might be overnight oats or maybe like a honey nut Cheerios, and then on the other days it will be an egg based breakfast. And so just kind of breakfast definitely rotates. Lunch is usually what whatever one thing I made is for the week, and then dinner the same. Nice. Yeah, so like historically, when I used to meal prep, I would do pretty similarly, but I don't think I thought about the meals until like the day that I was doing grocery shopping. So we would grocery shop on Saturday, same thing. 
And then I would always try to like get better and better at like getting in and out. So like the way that like my lists were written out, like I was trying to get in and out in like 45 minutes. But like if anyone knows or is familiar with H-E-B, H-E-Bs are like historically really busy on the weekends. So, you know, like I would write everything out. And so I would have at least for a week out. My mom was not a big fan of like eating the same thing every day. So it would have to like rotate back and forth. So if anything, I was preparing two dinners and like two different lunches. But most of the time our lunches were just salad and it was just rotisserie chicken. And then on top of like whatever vegetables we had left over from dinners or yeah, so things like that. So that was like mostly our lunches. Our breakfasts used to be mostly smoothies, like a protein smoothie because we were really big on that kick for a really long time. And it was just an easy way to get protein and get, um, you know, your vegetables and get your fruits and everything like that. So like breakfasts were always really easy. It was the lunches and dinners, but mostly the dinners that would like be a really big time suck. And I'm someone who can like eat the same thing. And when I like something, we'll eat it for the whole week. And then will want to make it the following week as well and continue to eat it. Like if I had it my way, I would eat the same thing for at least a month. But like my mom was like, aren't you tired of that? And I was like, um, I'm cooking. So no, I'm not tired of it. So, <laughs> um, but that's kind of how it would run was that like two meals and then going back and forth. So, you know, now that we're living on our own, Isaac and I are living on our own. We do have like different meals every day. But what I do find is that like, there's like a couple meals that I really like. And I'm like, could you make that again? He's like, we just had that like two days ago. I'm like, that's okay. But I also just like, I think that's just type the type of personality I have is that when I like something, like I really like it and we'll just continue to eat it. I think Japan lends itself to like eating seasonally which is nice because like there are certain fruits and vegetables that should not be available all the time but they are in the u.s so i feel like there's sometimes where i'm like oh i really want something with cilantro but it's winter time and cilantro doesn't grow in the winter so you know we'll have to wait until spring and winter or spring and summer for to eat those types of recipes so i think that's been really interesting is being able to eat with the season and like finding what's in season and eating then In terms of benefits for meal prep in your life, you know, we've kind of talked about like why we meal prep, but there is some science to it, which we found from Harvard School of Public Health, T.H. Chan School of Public Health, where they have kind of given a rundown of like why you should meal prep and like what are the the benefits for it and like how do you even get started. So we'll link that in our episode as well on this like kind of like if you're looking for reasons like why you should do it, that's not anecdotal research, which like Chris and I have done it because it's been convenient to us and helped us eat healthily health the healthier (laughs) so we have like scientific benefits as well so chris if you'd like to share some of these benefits according to harvard school of public health i mean i think a lot of it is just like common things that you would think of so like don't think that like oh these people from harvard wrote this article but oh it's very straightforward in the sense of like saving money saving time i know weight control is like or weight gain weight loss kind of is part of that and then just like knowing what you're eating controlling what you're eating and fixing the things that you like to eat and so i think just logistically it all just kind of like it all works in your context is a big part of it so like like you were saying meal prepping doesn't necessarily work in japan where servings are are made for like a smaller size and you don't have a microwave and you don't have an oven and so in that case like it might not be the most feasible option but I do know that like in the US, it is a very, very feasible option because again, buy as much stuff as you need to make as big of a serving as you really want to. And so things definitely are served and sold more for families, which is, I think also part of why it was really hard for me to unlearn cooking for families because everything comes in family sizes right? already. You buy it's like a pound individual. of pasta and like, what am I going to do? Only cook half a pound of pasta and then do what with this other half? Anyways. It just, it's easier to just kind of do it that way. And then also when you're buying in bulk or larger quantities, you tend to like save money in that regard as well, in that you don't have to buy it as often. I know for me as a vegetarian, which like also there aren't many options. There were just so many things. So like there weren't very many options just at a base level besides fast food near where I work. Even if there were other options with what time? Would I access said options? And so like the stress part is definitely real because I definitely remember a few times where I was like, okay, guys, I'm a risk taking this extra trip to go to Sonic, which is a little bit farther out. And so here's what we're going to do as a team. I'm going to 
place the order. I got y'all. Like, you know, if you're going to do it, be a team player about it. So it's like, I'll go pick up whatever order it is. And then if I'm running late, like y'all can pick up the kids and then I'll meet y'all outside. Cause I spent my entire lunch going to go get lunch. And then I think fun story time. The least diligent time was when I took half of the team with me to Sonic and we only <laughs> left one teacher for the oh, whole grade. Goodness. It was a mess. And then there was construction. And so that made it even like we oh, were no. late. It was a disaster. That Zero was, out of five stars would not that do that bad again. Too. It was no. bad. I definitely had to like drop them off at the front of the school and was like, just get out. I'll bring in the food, but go get the kids wherever they are. <laughs> I don't care where they are. They just better be in the seats by the time I walk up. So there's that. And like, you know, when there's just limited options, school lunches were also limited options. There would just be days where like there was nothing I could eat at the school anyway. And so that's also part of the problem is just like when you're on a specialized diet, sometimes like what's available isn't going to work. It just doesn't fit. And then making that transition to being a vegetarian, I did start to... I did have like a nutritional deficit for a month because I wasn't doing it healthily. And so meal prepping got me to learn more about the things that my body actually needed and what foods held those nutrients and like how to have them. Because like, yes, vitamins are a thing, but also getting the food naturally through food is A, more filling and B, I just think kind of like more naturally beneficial because it's like where your body's used to getting it from. And so I found... I agree definitely with like the scientific parts of contributing to a more nutritionally balanced diet. Cause like literally did meal prepping for that reason. And then again, also I'm just really cooker of foods. You're a chef by already, some may say. So like my food's just really good to eat anyway. Also it's my food. So like it's going to be good cause I made it the way I like to make it. And you know, I'm not, I'm not bragging too much on myself, but like have had people want me to meal prep for them as well so i'm just saying like that's the next side hustle y'all i know how i know how to cook i know my way around the kitchen i just couldn't keep doing it for other people because then my whole entire sunday was cooking which i don't necessarily have a problem with if that's my only job yeah that's that part because like when are you gonna relax if not because mm-hmm. then your saturday you're buying things sunday you're cooking all day yeah someone yeah. gotta clean it at some point like mm-hmm. mm, it was a lot and then yeah the last minute decisions on like what to eat didn't, that was never like a big stressor for me. But like, I could see how like, if you're someone who's suffering from decision fatigue, which I know educators often do, that can be just another sense of like, oh my God, what else yeah. do you want me to think about in my mm-hmm. life? Yeah, that part. Okay. So great. Thank you for letting us know about all the benefits and how they've benefited your life as well. I feel like we've been kind of just talking about the benefits throughout this entire episode. Because I think at the end of the day, the costs outweigh, no, no, I'm sorry. The benefits outweigh the cost, like the toss of time and the, all the things. It can be a little investment heavy in the beginning if you don't already have some of the things. I guess it depends on like where you're starting from. Because like if you don't have cookbooks or recipes, that can be either expensive or time consuming to find. If you don't have a well-equipped kitchen or like a larger kitchen, it can be harder to make bulk food items if you're dealing with like limited counter space or no oven, for example. And then the food storage is also a thing. So I know like I used to use like the plastic Tupperware because that's just what I used. I always used it growing up. And then, you know, you read one or two articles about polyurethane and leakage into B- BPH, BPA, that's what it was, leaking into your foods. And so it was an investment. I did switch all the way over to Glass. Pyrex and that was an investment. It took me like a year and a half of saving gift cards from people from Target <laughs> to be able Good. to be able yeah. to get like that full set Oh, and move everything over to that. Everyone's go-to gift cards for teachers target gift cards so i was just like okay save all of the gift cards and then so that's how i like replaced it all with pirates but like that's like well over a hundred dollars in and of itself right not including depending on like probably needing like higher quality cooking stuff so Mm. that could run all sorts of things so that's not to say that there are not costs associated with meal prepping for sure and i think sometimes like the costs are just a little bit more pronounced depending on like what your cooking experience is ahead of that time. True. And also some people can't cook well and it just might not be good. I think there's been a shift in terms of like meal prepping and 
like meal prepping tasty foods. Like I remember being in college and like the people who were meal prepping were those that were like meal prepping for, or I guess in my experience, were like meal prepping for like competitions and like weightlifting competitions. And like that was like my most, I think I like can remember that being like clearly why people would meal prep. And I just remember being like bland because of like competition, like you're cutting weight, you're doing all that, like you're just trying to get like the base protein. And I was like, oh, like, why would I ever want to like meal prep that? Like, I want to eat something good. So I think in the you know past 10 years, it has been like, no, like meal prep in moderation, like meal prep, like things that you want to eat that will taste good. And the way that this is going to be more healthy is because you are going to control the portion sizes or you're going to control like how balanced it is. So I think that that has definitely shifted my mindset in terms of like meal prep. But to end our episode, what are two of your favorite meal prep recipes that you can think of? And we'll share more on our podcast Instagram and everything. But what are two of your favorite meal prep recipes that you have? Me? Recipes? What? My gosh. Well, I actually have started a little compilation of recipes that I use as a go-to, almost like a little potential future recipe book of some sort. Right now, out of that book, I have two very common go-tos. And one is a roasted chickpea and brown rice recipe that has the brown rice, chickpeas, onion, and green and red bell pepper with the key ingredient here is chipotle Tabasco, not regular Tabasco mm. or just any old hot sauce. It has to be the chipotle Tabasco. And that is definitely like one of my go-tos because it is top tier. And it's just kind of throwing some base knowledge around cooking and just kind of going off of, going off of that. So that's definitely like easily what one of my favorites and definitely like a well requested food. Like people are like, Oh my God. I want to try that. Mm -hmm. Another one is the one pot sausage and rice recipe that I stole from that lady off of Instagram. (laughs) And honestly, because that one's actually pretty easy outside of like slicing the carrots and the sausage. That one's just like throw it in the pot and you're good. A good one pot. So that one is also very, very flavorful as well. Those are probably like my two go-tos, but like I definitely have a short list of five to 10 recipes that I use kind of frequently. And then every now and then just trying some new stuff from different places. As of right now, that book is, is chilling at a good, I would say I'm at about 10 or so recipes, but it's growing as I'm trying and learning more things. It's growing, but those would be like my two most popular go-tos. So we're going to drop his compilation of recipes as well. So two of my favorite recipes that I used to meal prep was number one was these Chinese green beans. It was Chinese green bean and sausage recipe. And it was so good. And it was so simple. But it's basically just like green beans in this like Asian inspired sauce. And you use Italian sausage. So like we would use hot Italian sausage, which is really hard to find out here. So it hasn't been super easy to adapt to make in Japan. So that's number one. That was one of my favorites. And then another one was actually a recipe that we got from Weight Watchers when my mom and I were doing Weight Watchers together. Every week when you would go to a Weight Watchers meeting, they would like have these handouts where you would kind of be going over whatever your topic was for the week. But with that, it came with recipes like recipe cards for things that were like low in points or like things that you should try that are like nutritionally balanced and all of these things. So one of them was, it's called the lemony, lemony sausage, one pot or chietti. And essentially what it has in it is ground sausage, broccolini, tomatoes, and it's orchietti noodles, which is the one that looks like a shell but not really a shell, kind of like a shell. And then at the end you would, you would put lemon on top of it. So it had like parmesan cheese but it also had lemon it was just so nice and that was like one of my favorite like i would make that at least like once every other week and my mom was so tired of it but it was so good and it was just like really filling so that was like one of my favorite recipes that we would make so i'll also drop those two recipes some of those weight watcher recipes are real bangers they really are they they just hit like they're just good like they know what they're doing so it's like that's definitely one of the spots that I check out. They don't necessarily always have vegetarian friendly ones, but I recently adapted one of their recipes that was a sheet pan broccoli recipe. And so it was originally with shrimp. So I just replaced the shrimp with tofu and like it was still a really good recipe. 
So yeah. like Weight Watchers is a spot. I have books that I use. And then I, the website that now showed me, The Modern Proper, also has a lot of easy to make recipes. And one of my favorite things that I like about them is that you can customize what types of recipes you're looking for. So if you're looking for, you know, quick and easy, one pot, vegetarian, vegan, whatever, like they make it really easy to find those as well. So just dropping some extra nuggets of where you could get some recipes some if you're looking resources. for them. Mm -hmm. yes. hey. With that, it's time for our rabbit fire question. <laughs> My question to you today comes from the TikTok, another one. The question is, and I don't know if you've seen it on Twitter, but have you ever seen the doppelgangers of different races on Twitter, <laughs> different ethnic groups? Have you ever heard that Sigourney Weaver and Michelle Obama look very similar, just different complexion? No, I, I nope. have not. What about Meryl Streep in Future? Nope. Can't say I've heard of these things. There's a trend where people were trying to do different actors of different ethnic groups and that they look the same, just like in different font. <laughs> My question to you is, if you saw your doppelganger on the street, but they were of a different race or ethnic background, do you think that you would recognize them? No, I don't. <laughs> Clearly not. Like, definitely not. Just based on the fact that you're just like, oh, look at these people that are probably that I'm sure probably do look very similar. but like. Nah, I'm not. I'm not good at that. I would. Yeah, I said the same thing. I was like, I would definitely not be able to tell. Like at, at all. all. How would I know? A lot of the times I don't even think about it. But when that Twitter trend came out, it was so funny because people were like, yeah, don't you think so and so and so and so? I was like, no. Meryl Streep in future. Meryl Streep in future. I'm sure someone saw it. Someone has a talent for that. It's just not me. Like this is Sigourney Weaver and Michelle Obama. It's the cheekbones. The cheekbones and like the... Oh, it's hard to yeah. Okay, interesting. Again, someone with a eye for faces, got it. It's not for me, though. <laughs> What's your question today? What do you want to do when you retire? When I retire? Man, will I ever be able to retire? Great questions. This one's to you, government. Yeah. <laughs> will I ever be able to retire? Facts. Um, If I were able to retire, I think I would want to pick up a new hobby. Like I want to just like better myself always. So if that's like learning a new language or like learning a new skill, I think that's what I would want to do. Like I, that's how I would want to spend my time is like taking like community college classes or mm -hmm. auditing courses. Like I would have nothing else to do except for do that um, and travel. I'd want to like travel everywhere. I think like when I think of like ideal retirement plans, I think of my aunt and uncle who like both retired. Now they're both like fully retired after being in the workforce for so long. And they like, to me, have the most ideal life because they plan one major trip a year. And then the rest of the time, they're just kind of like enjoying each other's company. Like, I think that that's like so cute. <laughs> just vibes, just do? vibes. Yeah. I would want to stay moving, just like out playing games, moving in the world, doing yoga. I definitely could see myself as being one of those people who does like Tai Chi in the park. Yes, that, that's like one of the best ways to like get your body yada yada. Mm -hmm, and keep it moving. So that would definitely be me. I just want to keep keep it going. Keep that sense of like movement. youthful movement. Just always moving, trying new stuff. And, you know, part of that would be like traveling. But I think, again, those would all be... I just want to retain the physical ability to do those things and comfortably. Because I know, oof, to being on things, you're just like, ooh, my feet hurt, ooh, my back hurt, ooh, my this. I'm just, man, I just got to keep it going. You know, I just got to yeah. keep my body limber, keep it stretched, keep it able to do all of these things. Yeah. So I don't ever want to get to a point where I'm that age where I'm like, oh, that movement is hard. <laughs> you know, like picking, mm -hmm. like picking up something is like difficult. I, I see that. I, Especially yeah. like beyond the sense of just like the natural, like it does happen. You, you get older. And so like you just lose part of that. But like the part that's in my control. Is like, what I, I yeah. Want to and maintain. I was going to say, I think you can, I think you can control. A lot of that to a certain aspect though, right? Is like you're able to continue to actively make the decision to keep moving. You know, like and yes, it starts now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and that's like you're you're playing the long game right now, right? Like we talk about all the time like shoes. And I know you you clown the F out of my podiatrist friendly shoes, but in thirty years when my feet are still, you know, working and kicking and doing all the things, like I will think, you know, twenty five year old me for putting on those ugly Terrible shoes. Terrible looking <laughs> shoes. 
just awful. But, you know, they're comfortable. They work. So that's it. Where can people find the podcast? You can find our podcast on Instagram and Facebook at The Tea with Crema. If you'd like to buy us a cup of tea, you can also Venmo us at The Tea with Crema. You can stream our episode on your favorite streaming platforms. We hope to see you next time. Bye!